Get up, Mac. Let me try to stand up. No. Let me try Don't to stand up. Stand. Exactly. Ah, exactly. <laughs> this is too much. Prosecutors in Utah say Nicholas Rossi, also known as Aliverdian, is believed to have used at least 16 different aliases. 16 aliases? No, typos. These are... <laughs> Sixteen aliases? No, typo. <laughs> okay, listen to me. I don't know why you're here assuming that I am Swoop. I okay. L listen to me. I don't know why you're here. <laughs> this is so bad. Wait, let me try it again. Scott. Okay. Uh, hi, it was. I am not a person named Swoop, nor am I aware of this so-called Spanky Valentine. I am. I am gluten freeze. What kind of name is Spanky? What kind of Spanky Valentine? Australia? I can't do Australia. G'day, mate. Uh, what kind of name is Spank Valentine anyway? That sounds like a cat. Why? <laughs> That's not Australia. That sounds like a character that would. Ta Transit? What the hell is that? Yeah, that sounds like a character that would die in the first place. Why do I? I'm just going southern. That sounds like a character that would die in the first place. Paris. Okay, Paris Hilton. I could do like. Ah, that's hot. Like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a character that would die in the first episode of a Ryan Murphy show before the first credits. Like, oh no, no, I am not. <laughs> okay. Channel Andrew Tate, channel. This is the only time in my life I want to channel Andrew Tate. Uh, what does he say? Uh, yeah, y'all losers. Okay, <laughs> that's how I get into character. I am an accent person named Petra von Davidson Gluten Freeze, and I firmly deny that I am in any way, shape, or form a person by the name of Spanky or Swoop or Valentine. Okay, hello, hello, hi. My name is Swoop and welcome to the sus pool, a place where everything and everyone is sus. Maybe even us. <laughs> Definitely me after those accents. Welcome, this is my second channel where instead of doing feature length documentary deep dives like on my main Swoop channel, instead here, we're gonna dip our toes into the sus pool in real time, as well as doing whatever the hell that was. Uh, I apologize in advance. It, clearly it's obvious, but I just have a boring American accent, so don't get too excited, okay? I, I actually said Sound more like this. Ah! All right, I don't want to waste any time whatsoever today. I'm going to jump right into a clip that my team and I have been obsessed with all year. <laughs> and we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. But um, I can't because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people say that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. <laughs> Exactly. There's been a recent development that has brought this clip that has absolutely haunted me. I mean, this is literally my new sleep paralysis demon. And the development has brought this back to the forefront of my nightmares. And I figured now would be as good a time as any to talk sh**. <laughs> so we're gonna jump into it, but a couple of quick things. I have a brand new swoop doc that is now up on my main channel. I posted it a couple of days ago. Uh, it is brand new, so I will have that linked in the description. And also, in my last video on this channel, I asked if y'all were into me doing some like spooky, mind-bending, creepy, mystery, wild shit and y'all overwhelmingly said yes. So I am working on several creepy mind-bending stories. Again, I'm just kind of feeling out this brand new channel right now. So thank you for being here. We're experimenting a little bit. Let me know what you wanna see in the comments below and I'm going to make it happen. Real quick, I wanna show you what is on my face. I just have to shout her out really quick because I'm so excited for her. So Bailey Sarian has a new collab palette with Melt. It's called Fatally Yours and she sent this to me and I immediately as soon as I opened the box, I just smeared it all over my face. And can we talk about this? I am so freaking obsessed with these colors and I'm so excited for her. Like this is literally a dream palette. I have so many of these shades on my eyes right now. And she also has a gel glitter, which is just stunning. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm so proud of Bailey and everything that she's been doing. So flowers and round of applause for Bailey. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys that. We were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. What do you say to people who say these are crocodile tears? He's putting on a show. This is all an act. Oh, Ika. Andrew, no, that's, that's, that's a low blow. That's a right low blow. Okay, I don't even know where to begin with this story. Uh, for anyone out there whose first time this is seeing this clip, like, if you met this man in Scotland back in 2021 or 2022, you'd allegedly be meeting Arthur Knight, an allegedly Irish orphan who allegedly claims 
that he's been the long alleged victim of an alleged media smear campaign. Allegedly. If you met him before 2020, you might think that he's actually an American man by the name of Nicholas Aliverdian, or Nicholas Rossi, or Nicholas Brown, or Mr. Oxygen Mask. I don't know, the man's got so many damn names in this story. The question is, why would you think that? Well, police say this man has lived his life under at least 16 different names. They believe he fled from America to the UK to avoid charges in Utah. Then, in 2020, they were told he was dead. Just under a year ago, police believed they had found the fugitive in Scotland. He pulled it over a lot of people, but he got fooled. Did the family believe Nicholas had died? No. He's not dead. He loves life too much. People who knew Nicholas Rossi, Nicholas Aliverdian, claim that it's you. DNA doesn't lie. He's a con artist, is what he is. I call him a jellyfish, because a jellyfish, you can't pick it up, there's no spine to it, but it has long tentacles and it can sting you. Okay, so in case you didn't catch that in the clip, there is this article by Mary Whitfall Roloffs out of Forbes, where the lead of the story sets the stage quite well. Quote, the Utah man who allegedly faked his own death and posed as an Irish orphan to escape an R-word charge will be extradited from Scotland to the United States, a Scottish politician ordered after a prolonged court battle meant to prevent his return. Okay, show of hands, who's got the question, how the hell does a man from Utah even have the means to do all of this? Well, fellow Suspirians, join me on a dip into the suspool. I've got my notes here where we are going to explain how allegedly a Scottish man was allegedly an Irish man who was actually a Utah essayer who was also once a Rhode Island politician. What the hell? What? Are you with me? Am I f***ing with me? Because I don't understand how this is all gonna happen. Now, most of these notes come from the diligent reporting by STV News and NBC Dateline, as well as the Providence Journal. So big shout out to them. Mr. Oxygen Mask, that, okay, that that's not from Dateline or anything. That's just my name for him. You'll see why. Mr. Oxygen Mask was born Nicholas Aliverdian, and he was born on July 11th, 1987 in Rhode Island, which would make him uh, like 36, 36 now. Uh, he's been, I can math. This is Cranston, a small town near the capital of Rhode Island, where Nicholas Aliverdian spent most of his childhood. And he was diagnosed like very early on with mental health challenges and behavioral issues, uh, with his stepdad saying, He lived with his mother and stepfather, David Rossi. The singer, who was an Ingelbert Humperdinck impersonator, adopted him when he was eight. So basically, as I understand it, he spent uh, a lot of his time in psychiatric care uh, in different hospitals. Nicholas took his stepfather's surname, but the pair's relationship was nothing short of turbulent. From day one, when I adopted him and his brother and sister, they weren't no bargains either. He was trouble hit his mother, hit his grandmothers. And he was given a couple of diagnoses uh, with attention deficit disorder, which I don't, they don't refer to it that way anymore, uh, but that was his diagnosis and also a narcissistic personality disorder, so NPD. So there's a lot of things going on very early on in this guy's life, right? Trouble going to school, want to run everything, always want to be in control. He, he just wanted everything his way. He was the devil's spawn. Dude, this man called him the devil's spawn. So Mr. Oxygen Mask himself uh, has said that he had, you know, kind of a difficult childhood growing up and that, you know, like even apart from all of this, that his parents were abusive and alcoholic and couldn't take care of him. Those are quotes from him. This led him to being placed in the Department of Children, Youth and Families. Uh, and he alleges that uh, during his time there, he was, you know, kind of like bounced around from different homes and said it was just absolutely terrible. Like the, the kids w would, you know, bully him, would threaten him, would beat him up. Now, surprisingly, with having that type of upbringing and the uh, diagnoses, he still went on to be hired as a legislative page in the Rhode Island House of Representatives at the very, very, very young tender age of 14. Yeah, I didn't know people could get hired for those jobs at 14, but apparently you can. It was at this time, Nicholas got his first job at Rhode Island State House. He worked with politicians, 
helping them with paperwork. They say he was a man who refused to take no for an answer. Now, as the years, you know, progressed, uh, Mr. Oxygen Mask was known as a very outspoken critic of the state's use of their state-of-the-art facilities uh, for children who were under the care of the types of programs that he uh, grew up in. And he even actually testified in front of lawmakers, alleging that he was SA'd and harmed while he was sent, you know, around from temporary shelters within the Rhode Island area. He actually told the Associated Press in 2011 and quote, it's an inhumane approach to a human problem. We have the ability to provide for them here and we're spending all this money to ship them across the country. Now, in that same year, in February of 2011, he initiated a federal lawsuit and the, the list of things that were put on the lawsuit is very long. And it was against this DCYF, uh, as well as the states of Florida and Nebraska, uh, six residential facilities and 18 individuals individual people, all for the alleged abuse committed against him, including uh, the Rhode Island governor. And I was subjected to torture, beatings, assault in various forms. I was refused to contact anybody, anybody at all. And the lawsuit like basically wrapped up with the uh, DCYF denying any liability or culpability regarding the allegations. Okay, so you still with me? Okay, I know we like went a little hard on the guy at the beginning, so I know what you might be thinking. Why am I being so mean to somebody that was advocating for children's rights in the foster care system? Swoop, how can you be so heartless? And let me put it to you like this. Uh, when speaking strictly about his careers in politics and advocacy, uh, Nicholas Alaverdian sounds like a hero, uh, somebody worth celebrating, someone who, if they, you know, passed away, would get multiple obituaries honoring the many achievements that I just discussed here. Uh, in fact, a lot of this comes from an old archived MSN news obituary for Saint Nick when he allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, passed in 2020. Yeah, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Cause I'm putting it down quite a lot there, like little breadcrumbs, just there they are. I don't know what that was. Now this obituary has the truly magnificently beautiful line, quote, he lived a warrior's life, a fighter in spirit, but a peacemaker in practice. He overcame significant abuse and harmful living conditions, end quote. Now that's an outstanding way to memorialize the man that I just described. <sighs> Too bad it's a crock pot full of whole grain for so, 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 so many reasons, such as. Okay, we gotta, we're gonna take a look at a couple of clips here. Former state representative Brian Coogan took Nicholas under his wing. He initially thought the teenager was a genuine hard worker who had an unusually keen interest in the law for someone so young. I really need to know, was he, did he have such an interest in the law because he's just like, I'm gonna break every single law that I possibly can. So let me find out how these things work so I can like skirt around him. He kept asking me to adopt him because he was, didn't have any family and he was in a group home and a foster home. Why didn't you adopt him? He called me up one day. He said, Rep, you gotta come down the court. You gotta come down the court. They're trying to get rid of me. So I get down to the courthouse, and as soon as I walk up, he grabs me, hugs me, and embraces me like I was the only thing he had in this world. If any of it, it's really hard to know, like, if any of this is remotely true about his time, like, in foster care. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Like, it's a really complex thing, right? Especially with so many lies here. I said, Nick, whoa, what's going on? He says, They're trying to get rid of me. You gotta help me. And I went in with the judge. And he said to me, he goes, see this file right here? He had a file on Nick. So all the times that he was telling you and the other reps up the state, I said he was being abused. Those were all self-inflicted. <gasps> what? What? That is wild, dude. Okay. If they're self-inflicted for like him getting attention or for trying to, I don't know, manipulate the system some type of way, it still like sucks, right? I'm just like, did somebody, did, did someone try to intervene or were they just like, no, nah, you can't like put them, put them away somewhere. <laughs> All 
All right, we're gonna slip into a little bit of non-descriptive, non-graphic discussion uh, that has to do with SA, but don't worry, it's all censored. We're gonna keep this light. Uh, now, according to the uh, Providence Journal, a Sinclair Community College student, then we're talking about this is back in like January of 20, 2008, uh, met Nick Nicholas on campus in Ohio. And, you know, they like hung out, they had like lunch and a little bite together. And he had offered to walk her to her class. So we met at the, the campus cafeteria. He said, do you mind if I walk you to your class? They did not make it to class, at least not in the way that she anticipated that she would. Uh, in a basement uh, kind of stairwell, he allegedly pinned her against a wall. That's all the detail I'm gonna give there. And at that point, I ran up to my class and I was like, this is, I think, just the safest place for me to go right now. And then I come out and he's waiting for me. Bad, bad, bad. Now, later on, uh, it was said that he apologized and told her basically that he couldn't help it because she was so beautiful uh, and basically told her not to tell anybody. And he's, I'm so sorry, I got caught up. I'm so sorry, I couldn't resist. You were just so pretty and just giving me the whole line. And then I go and I report what happened to the police. You know, it's like the tried and true excuse. Like somehow it's her fault, right? Cause she's so pretty and so it's her fault. Like how could he help it? Like, oh my gosh, she's an ass. Now, the woman did file a police report, and then later on in the year, Nick, who he was at the time, he was going by the name Nicholas Rossi. Uh, he was convicted of public indecency and Esuel in position for doing this to that woman. He gets sentenced. The, the judge does find him guilty in my case. He had to register as a... And he was then required to register as an S offender. So uh, the justice system actually working there for once. Great. But listen to this because this is so twisted. So instead of like doing what he should have done and just like, you know, I don't know, coward in a hole and never come out uh, again, um, because what are you doing? Uh, he actually turned around and sued his anonymous victim. And he accused her of liable uh, because she had described him as crazy. And honestly, what the f else adjective do you think we should be using to describe? Well, actually, I could think of far worse adjectives. So she actually was quite nice uh, referring to you as that. Uh, in 2014, his claim was dismissed. <laughs> Good. Um, and it was said to be without merit. But fun fact, that same year, uh, he also decided to write an essay. And what was it titled? I'm not making this up. I wish it did. It was called My Personal 9-11. Yeah. That's where he named and also blamed this woman for ruining uh, his goals and aspirations, as he put it, and straight up compared her actions to September 11. If you can imagine anything more f***ed up than that. So yeah. That's what we're dealing with here, people. The cesspool runneth over today uh, with Nicholas Rossi Aldaverdi and whatever the f Let's end the cycle here. Let's get, get it documented because I don't know why, but it just, it felt very orchestrated and rehearsed. But you know, like bravo to the survivors for just saying like, let's end the cycle here. Like, listen, if somebody violates you like this, like it is not your responsibility to worry about ruining their life. Like if you speak out. You can speak out, please don't. It's not your project, right? They are not your project. He ruined his life the moment that he harmed somebody. And if somebody does that to you, they're ruining their own life. That's on them, it's not on you anyways. I just, yeah, we needed to say something. Now that's just one example of what a monstrosity this guy was uh, even before his story went truly crazy. I mean, excuse me, uh, went off the rails. I think he would prefer that language. So if we rewind it back a little bit. In 2010, uh, Nick Nicholas pleaded no contest to domestic simple He then got married and not even seven months like after he gets married, this guy is just raining terror everywhere. His wife then filed a restraining order against him. Uh, then he allegedly stalked her. So real prize winning sus sh here and his wife thankfully uh later divorced him and i do hope that she's enjoying a happier life now but nick not old nicky poo so he got married again in october of 2015 i almost feel like when people are like this uh they should have like if they go to get like married multiple times and they've just been like the worst in their relationships or to strangers um there should be like 
You know how like when you have a passport and you're gonna travel to another country and then they just like a chink, you know, they give you the stamp. Like I feel like there should be like a marriage passport where if you like harm somebody and then like get charged for it. It should be like in a passport that you have to present to like even get engaged or like at least at the altar, you know what I mean? And then the like potential future spouse has like a choice, be like, do I want to stamp this passport or do I want to get a different visa? You know what I mean? I'm just, it was just a thought. Just, I'm just putting it out there in case anybody, Okay, anyways. So yeah, gets married in 2015 and seven months later, uh, seems to be a really lucky number for this guy. Uh, he was divorced again on grounds of being quote, guilty of gross neglect or duty and extreme cruelty. I know we're like, kind of like talking about this guy and this topic in like a lighter hearted tone and I'm not going into the details the way I would like in a swoop doc, like in a full breakdown. Uh, but this is like, it's foul, he's foul. But in 2017, the poo-poo really began to hit the fan for Nick when investigators in Utah began processing a backlog of previously untested SA kits. They're coming for you, bitch! Cause there's a backlog and it's big. Uh, the following year, one of the 2008 kits was revealed to have none other than Nicholas Alaverdian's DNA in it. Shocking. Uh, it wasn't revealed until 2022, but the investigation that stemmed from this actually led to a number of absolutely intense allegations against Nick across the states of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Ohio, and Utah, quote, involving a number of criminal cases of S assault, harassment, and possible kidnapping from 2007 through 2019. So, you know, don't call him an overachiever, just call him an asswipe, allegedly. Ah! But you know, what do I know? I'm just doing the backstroke in the sus pool looking for a flotation device. But the whole advocate to whole pipeline, like that's not even on allegedly since Nicholas Alaverdian, to be clear, is a registered S offender, accused R Wordis, and apparently an accused kidnapper too. But you know what else he is? Someone who was under investigation for fraud. <laughs> Shh, Hawking, right? Yeah. So the FBI uh, started investigating Nick after his former foster mom, Sharon Lane, uh, had alleged that he opened 22 credit cards under her husband's name, building up a massive $200,000 in debt. Now, Nick's former lawyer, like, could you imagine like having Nick's former lawyer as part of your biography? <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you, I'm Steve. Nick's former lawyer. Ah. Now they claimed that Nick had moved to Ireland in uh, 2019 in an attempt to like start the uh, FBI's investigation. Now it's not clear like if his lawyer is telling the truth here, I just, you know, there's that whole, what is it? Zealous advocacy for your client. And then there's just, you know, being a dick and lying. Nick had actually told the Providence Journal that he and his wife had moved to Quebec, Canada, and a Rhode Island priest also claimed that Nick's wife said he had moved to Switzerland. So yeah, and it keeps going. Uh, State Representative Raymond Hull uh, made it like even more confusing somehow uh, when he had said that, no, 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 he's actually either in Ireland or Germany. I mean, a Where's Waldo? Who needs that when you can play Where's Oxygen Boy? So for those of you keeping up at home, that's one fraud investigation from the FBI for $200,000 in credit card debt, multiple accusations of s misconduct, one count of kidnapping, and a partridge in a pan. Okay, I'm sorry. It's, it's Christmas time. I, okay. The walls were quickly closing in on former boy wonder of Rhode Island foster care reform. And what made it even worse was that in January, 2020, Nick reported to many local news outlets in Rhode Island that he had tragically at the age of 32 been diagnosed with non Hodgkin lymphoma. And suddenly on February 29th, 2020, almost without warning, it was announced that Nick had succumbed to the illness he had just announced. <sighs> Yeah, just wait. Uh, as a foster care reform advocate, the obituaries came pouring in, uh, discussing his legacy and his diligent work in fighting the DCYF, uh, though often leaving out, you know, all that other stuff that happened to him that he got caught for. And just like that, Nicholas Alaverdian was no more. He was dead. 
And he probably would have stayed that way if it weren't for his own damn ego. Like, like I said at the start of this, Nicholas Alaverdian faked his death. <laughs> but he couldn't just fake it and like move on to a private island like the rest of the people who do that kind of sh No, he had to be like a jackass and ruin the fun and get caught. <laughs> but how did that get figured out? Well, it all started in July of 2020. So the Providence Journal that I've been referencing here uh, had revealed that in January of 2021, uh, that Rhode Island uh, State Police began an investigation into Alaverdian's death to see if it was like real. You know, they're just kind of like, like, I don't know who farted, but something smells a little weird here, right? We know, <laughs> let's snip this out. And they started looking into this almost like right after it was announced that he had died. Uh, now that investigation was uh, brought on by allegations from anonymous sources that Alaverdian was still alive, along with a very lengthy outstanding warrant against him because he was accused of failing to register as an S offender in Rhode Island um, in relation to what happened in 2008 in Ohio. Furthermore, Sharon Lane, you remember his former foster mother, the credit card thing, said that she had been approached by Nick's biological mother in July of 2020 who also was a little feeling a little suspicious okay it's a little sus where's the sus pool we might need to dip in it uh about the reports about his death so you've got like the foster bomb you've got the biological bomb none of them are buying it Nicholas and when Sharon read the you know the gushing comments uh on his obituary and all of the memorials she was like something's really fishy around here and like like I don't like it at all like I don't it, like it sucks <laughs> she was basically convinced that the style of of writing of the obituaries was Nick's. She thought Nick wrote it and she believed because of that he had faked his death. Like literally even Nick's former attorney, uh, Jeffrey B. Pine also thought that Nick faked his death because the news came so fast after he learned the FBI was investigating him. So that's super convenient. But do y'all wanna know the single funniest reason Nick's plan fell apart so quickly? In late 2020, the website Wikipediacracy flagged the accuracy of the Nicholas Alaverdian Wikipedia article. Now, a team member named Michael Cockrum had basically said that uh, the many Wikipedia accounts that were created by Nick, so Nick created Wikipedia accounts, got many of them, those accounts that he made had edited the Wikipedia page after the date of his alleged death. <laughs> I kid you not! And that one of those accounts, one of his accounts even tried to remove an image of him and replace it with a different picture of someone else. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, but this shit is so ridiculous. He's literally like, hey, yeah, I mean, I know that I said I died or whatever, but like, I just need to take down the picture. I don't want people to see that picture. Let me just go in and edit it real quick. Can you imagine? So then Cockrum was like, you know what? I also think that this guy is alive and made allegations publicly that Nick was now trying to take down the Wikipedia article about him uh, and also remove like any information that disputed his reported death. And I'm just like, bro, you had one job, right? You had one job here to just like die and not exist and be done and then move to the private island. And like, literally you just couldn't, you couldn't help it. You just had to devil wikipedia let me just change it real quick let me just so to be clear if the allegations here are correct nicholas alaverdian was found out by wikipedia because the man didn't want people to recognize him so he changed his photo <laughs> from his own account now on one hand i gotta give credit where credit's due because i absolutely cannot for the life of me think of a time where a downfall was kick-started because of wikipedia outside of i don't know like a college student just like plagiarizing their whole term paper from wikipedia or something let's that's small potatoes compared to this big french fry of a f up now from here listen okay the jig is up for nick okay the cards have folded the biscuit is stale rihanna ain't making the album so now it was all about 
finding him. So on February 1st, 2021, the Providence Journal made a follow-up to their prior report stating that they got a rambling and often incoherent uh, and nine-page long email. Who is sending emails that long? Delete, do not send. Uh, they got it from a person who claimed that they were Nick's widow. The intent of this email was basically to talk shit about the first victim of Nick's S crime activity. Can you, like, can you imagine? Can you imagine a world in Pete Davidson's universe where somebody, a widow of somebody, is writing a nine page email to talk shit about some anonymous woman who was a student, who had an encounter, who was assaulted? Like, it's not happening. It's just not happening. Nick, Nicholas, we know it's you, Nick. So here we are, it's December 13th, 2021. Nick was arrested at Queen Elizabeth University Hospital in Glasgow, Scotland, where he was receiving treatment for C-19 under the name of Arthur Knight. Yes, he is now knighted himself in Scotland. Uh, he was identified because of his tattoos, you know, cause that's how you're gonna run and hide from that, uh, and his fingerprints. Yeah, way to go, Nick, uh, which all matched police records, though there was actually scarring on one of his arms that was suggesting that he may have tried to remove one of the tattoos. And so that now legendary viral video where Nicholas Brown, Rossi, Arthur Knight, Oxygen Mask, S.A. Asshat Aliverdian is pretending to not be Nicholas Aliverdian and also, I don't know, pretending to be dying even though he already died once, but who the f we were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. <laughs> I need to know, I need to know, who is this woman? Who is this woman sitting next to you, Nicholas? What is going on? And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. What kills me? So you you like hear the oxygen like running. This is not real. None of this is real. The man does not need this. It is a disguise. That's what's so wild about it, right? Listen, bro, if you're gonna go through those many hoops to like hide your identity, why are you doing these interviews, okay? Just like go off the grid. This is where I look at the need for attention when I think about uh, where he may have been self-inflicting things to get attention or whatever it was when he was in foster care and the lawsuits based off of false allegations. And now this, it seems just like a constant attention grab. But um, I can't because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people he said, I can't breathe. It does not. Let me try to stand up. No. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry, all this clip literally just lives rent free all up in my brain. This is too much. He said, I can't breathe. I can't even stand. Look, no, see, look, no, exactly. Ex he said, exactly. It does not. Let me try to stand up. No. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. 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 This is reaching some kind of twisted R. Kelly Gale interview level iconic sh right here. Someone who believes that, that you are Nicholas Aliverdian. I am not Andrea. I am not <laughs> Nicholas Aliverdian. Andrea, Andrea, I am not. <laughs> Saying that you're not this person a million times over doesn't change the fact that your tattoos and your fingerprints told on you, bro. Like your fingerprints gave you away. What are you gonna do? And I do not know how to make this clear. What do you say to people who say these are crocodiles? tears he's putting on a show this is all an act oh i love that he says her name andrea that's a low blow again who is this woman with him who is she how did she sign up to this why did she sign up to this what is she getting out of this i don't understand i am so curious though i want to know the backstory Right, Y'all, I'm sorry, I gotta see him stand up again. Hey, that's not. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly.
This is so unhinged and I don't even use that word, but it like legitimately, I don't know what else to call this right now. Now this story is currently unavailable online now through legal means for reasons that like I couldn't really figure out, but like it's okay uh, because it wasn't the first time people got to see Mr. Oxygen Mask in action. That would be from a now legendary documentary produced by Scotland's STV News, who in November, 2022 released an absolutely baffling expose titled Nicholas Rossi, The Extraordinary Story of a U.S. Fugitive Found in Glasgow. Out on bail, awaiting his next extradition hearing. Who are you? Hi, I'm Martha Knight, and this is my wife, Miranda Knight. <laughs> He's now Arthur Knight and Miranda Knight. And he's got the, the fact that his accent just keeps changing and his accent is legitimately worse than mine, okay? And mine belongs in the gutter. And this is so funny. And I love that she's just sitting there next to him, like holding his arm, like, it's okay. It's okay, honey. We'll get through this together. And unfortunately, there are those who are trained differently. Are you Nicholas Rossi? No. Are you that Nicholas Alaverdian? Absolutely not. <laughs> It's just, the thing is, there's an easy way to prove if you're not these people. It's through your fingerprints. Are you Nicholas Brown? Yes. When asked why he changed his name. Wait, she just asked, are you Nicholas Brown? But he also just said his name was Arthur Knight. So did he just admit to being two different days at the same time? I want to know what's going on. From Nicholas to Arthur, he replied because it was associated with bad childhood experiences in Northern Ireland. Miranda, who claims she married her husband in Bristol two years ago, says she was there when Police Scotland arrested her husband in hospital as he recovered from COVID. Dude, they're saying that she has been married to him for two years. Can you imagine dealing with this guy for two years? Arrivals to court for bail hearings were in a wheelchair. An oxygen mask remained on throughout this interview. Again, all of this, all of this, is a lie and i'm wondering like what is he like when like when the cameras are off i nearly died and we uh, we are this is a case of mistaken identity you say you've never been to the united states never in my life never in his life has he been to the united states except that he's been to ohio idaho massachusetts uh, Utah. He's been to more states than most people ever be in the united states they claimed in court you were identified from tattoos that is not true. There is no evidence whatsoever that um, uh, there are tattoos, and I've shown that to news reporter. <laughs> There's no evidence whatsoever that there are tattoos. Do you know how easy it would be? Just roll up your sleeves. Just roll up your sleeves. In this interview with a US network, he did yeah, agree to roll up one sleeve. One sleeve. It was up further, right? Oh, oh. And have you had any tattoos removed? My gosh, there he is right there. And he like showed the rolled up sleeve of the arm and the tattoos don't even go down that low. So like you still haven't seen all of this up here. His intensive care staff from the Glasgow hospital where he was arrested told the extradition hearing about seeing distinctive arm tattoos on their patient while they treated him for COVID. These appeared similar to the images held by Interpol. During his evidence in court this week, the man himself claimed he had gone into hospital without any markings and had been tattooed <gasps> while in a coma for 18 days. Oh my gosh, did you guys hear that? He's literally claiming that he was in a coma for 18 days in the hospital and they like shackled him down in his coma and tattooed him up because last time I checked, that's what doctors and nurses are spending their time doing. Why do we need to provide medical care? Nope, let's just ink him up. A tattoo artist from Nicholas's hometown says his distinct ink could have been removed over time but markings may still be visible. That top one would be a little tough because it does look like there's some scar tissue that would be going on with the books that are open. He's done uh, quite a masterful job of hiding himself from the law. Prosecutors in Utah say dad. Nicholas Rossi, also known as Aliverdian, is believed to have used at least 16 different aliases. That's literally the same guy. That's him right there. It's literally, do you see that? It's the same guy. Wait. What did he just say? He Prosecutors in Utah say dad. Nicholas Rossi, also known as Aliverdian, is believed to have used at least 16 different aliases. 16 aliases? No, typos. <laughs> this my boy really just said 
that his 16 aliases were all just typos. <laughs> I don't even have anything to 16 aliases, no. Typo. <laughs> Very serious charges that this man faces. They claim this man faked his own death to evade no, those charges. Did you fake your own death? I'm... Jared, uh, uh, we're just having a conversation. I've never been dead to anyone. What kind of answer is that? Because it's a simple question, right? Did you ever fake your own death? No. Easy to answer. But instead he was like... I, I've never been dead to anyone? What does that mean? And why couldn't you directly answer it? I don't, I just, I don't know what is going through this guy's head, but I do know that he is clever enough and smart enough to get a job working for the government, uh, smart enough to file lawsuits. You know, it's not like we're dealing with someone who's just doesn't understand or know anything that's going on in the world, right? That's not what's going on here. This guy knows exactly what he's doing. It is strategic. It is planned. He knows how to run from the law. <laughs> he knows how to evade police and the FBI and to go to multiple different countries and to travel. He knows how to do all of that, right? This is not a dim individual. This is probably a somewhat intelligent individual, which is also terrifying. This is a vicious lie, but we are also incredibly disgusted by the fact that we now have to live our lives in, in, uh, secretive way because my wife can't even walk down the pavement to get a pint of milk. <laughs> my wife can't even walk down the pavement to get a pint of milk. Listen, Nicholas Arthur Knight Aliverdian, you're not really living that secretive of a life when you've done like 50 different interviews now, are you? Okay, we're gonna move on. Arthur Knight was taken into custody after fears he posed a flight risk. My Just weeks gosh. earlier, he had been arrested while being treated for COVID in a Glasgow hospital, as the American authorities believed he was Nicholas Aliverdian. Since news of his arrest, more women have spoken about their experiences of Nicholas's behaviour. Despite making international headlines following repeated court appearances, this accused man didn't shy away from the spotlight. I'm sorry, what is happening here? He has a microphone and a recorder and he's interviewing the press who are like there to interview him? This is so bizarre. He is loving this attention. It's now official. Arthur Knight is Nicholas Rossi, a.k.a. Nicholas Aliverdian. It's a court decision those in Rhode Island suspected all along. Then there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is confirmed by the courts. He can't run anymore. So in October of 2023, a little bit ago, uh, a few things happened that finally seemed like they were going to bring justice to the many, many, many women Nicholas Eleverdian has harmed over the years. Uh, first, on October 5th, it was announced that Nick was set to be extradited back to the US from Scotland after a request was granted by the Scottish government. But then on October 12th, he was straight up arrested yet again in Essex for a 2017 allegation, yet again, of SA made against him. Now, I'm kind of like torn about this news, right? Because it's one chance for Nick to be on the receiving end of justice, but it's also being reported that this may delay his extradition back to the United States where most of his charges are awaiting him. Now worse, Nick has applied to appeal his extradition order altogether. So we're gonna see how that winds up. All right, where this leaves us is an interesting position for the future of Nicholas Aliverdi. And on one hand, he will likely be on the receiving end of justice no matter where he's located because his past has come back to haunt him. And on the other hand, he faces two counts of R and one of S battery in the United States, not to mention his many fraud counts and the pesky business of him faking his own death. Now, Folks don't take too kindly to those things, Mr. Oxygen Boy. Uh, now, real talk, this is legit like the worst grift I think I have ever seen. Like, it is so so bad. And what makes it so over the top wild uh, is that Nicholas Eleverdian is very bad at this grift, right? Like I started this video because of a funny clip, but behind the funny clip is a deeply disturbing story of somebody who is genuinely a menace and does not seem well. And like his wife, like, 
what is going on? Like, does anybody, what is the story on her? I just, all I could say is I hope that all of these women find justice soon because what the f dude, this guy sucks. Okay, let us get out of the cesspool and dry off. That's what I got. I have a brand new full deep dive swoop documentary on my main channel uh, that I will have linked below. So make sure that you are subscribed to my main channel. Thanks for coming along for the ride. This is our third video on this new channel. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this new channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter and tell your friends. Uh, new videos are gonna be coming here very soon. We're gonna get into that creepy mind bending weird conspiracy conspiracy dark story shit. I'm very much looking forward to that so stay tuned for all of that as we dive back in to the cesspool Swoop!